we're going to take the areas of a bunch of rectangles whose area is the base, delta x, times the height, which is the height of the function, evaluated at bunches of different points. Uh, so that's the area of a rectangle. We're going to add up all the rectangles, starting with the first rectangle and going to the nth rectangle. The more rectangles we have, the better our approximation is, so we're going to take an infinite number of rectangles. So that's what we want to get. We're going to find all the pieces. Delta x is b minus a over n, so 5 minus and minus 1 over n is 6 over n. Then my x of i, right-hand rectangles, are going to start with a and add i delta x's to get to every point you want to evaluate at. So a is negative 1 plus i times 6 over n. Now I'm going to find my f of xi by plugging in my x of i into my function. So f of x of i is 1 plus 3 times 1, oops, negative 1, plus 6i over n. Cleaning this up, 1 minus 3 is minus 2, distributing the 3 plus 18i over n. Now I'm ready to plug in to this. So now that I have all my pieces, this is limited as n goes to infinity of delta x we said was 6 over n, and f of x of i is negative 2 plus 18i over n. Now, uh, oops, I lost my sigma. i equals 1 to n. Now I'm just going to play with this. So first stage done, got our setup. Now I've got to deal with the, the sums. So if I clean this up, I can pull any the only thing that's changing with respect to the sum is the i, so everything else can be pulled out as a constant. So that 6 over n can be pulled out, and then I can break this sum up. There's properties of sums you can do what you think you can. So I'm going to break this sum up into uh, negative 2 plus this sum, pulling the 18 over n to the front, leaving me with the i still inside. And the reason why this is nice is because we have formulas for these things. So the sum of a constant is just that constant times n, so negative 2n, which makes sense. If you're going to sum up a bunch of negative 2s, you have n negative 2s. Uh, for this one here, the sum of i, not as intuitive, but you want to memorize it as n times n plus 1 over 2. There's just a formula for that. Wonderful. No more sums for us. Now we just have to deal with this limit. When we write it like this, this n will always cancel with a bunch of those n's once it distributes. And now, if we sort of clean this up some more, I've got that 6 out front. I can cancel a 2 with an 18 to make a 9. So this will be negative 2 plus 9. And then I'm going to keep that n plus 1. I'm going to shove that n underneath there. So now when I evaluate this limit, I've got the 6, I got the negative 2, and the limit of n plus 1 over n, the 9 can just chill, it's a constant, limit of n plus 1 over n, polynomial over polynomial with the powers matching, as they will if you've done things right, those, uh, if the powers match, you can take the coefficients, so 1 over 1 is just a 1. You could also do L'Hopital's rule there, I'll get to the same thing. So now, no more limit, negative 2 plus 9 is 7, so 6 times 7 is 42. All right, so, got an answer. We got it the long way with the definition. Let's check it the short way with our uh, normal antiderivatives and uh, fundamental theorem calculus part 2, which sounds scary, but it's just what we're always using. We don't even know it. So uh, antiderivative is x plus 3x squared over 2. Evaluate that from negative 1 to 5. Plugging in the 5, I get 5 plus 3 times 25 over 2. Plugging in the negative 1, I get negative 1 plus 3 over 2. Now, 5 minus and minus 1 is 6. 75 halves minus 3 halves is 72 halves. So 6 plus 36 is indeed 42, which matches that. Should have known, right? The answer to life, the universe, and everything. Tis gorgeous. All right.